Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Pastor John Pope from Galilee Missionary Baptist Church, and we want to welcome you to another session of the Worship Hour. You know, our God is an awesome God, and when we come to the house of God, we want to lift him up, we want to magnify him, and we want to glorify him. So today, as we get ready for worship, as you get ready for worship, I want you to free your heart, free your mind, look to the hills, and let's give God some glory. Come on, everybody. Let's go to church.
Just let it go for a little while and let's see what God's going to do. Amen. I tell you, I've already had some struggles this morning. But I don't care because God is already about to do. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to praise him. We're going to praise him. We're going to praise him. I'm going to ask the praise team now if they will come and give us a, a selection to help us to get started. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord.
Somebody knew, amen. I knew somebody was going to know. 
getting ready, getting ready, getting ready for that deal. Well, today, what I would like to talk with us about is something and someone who is very, very special. Something and someone that we should never, ever overlook. And that someone is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Never overlook Jesus Christ during this time of the year. I'm going to use um, uh, a couple of scriptures that I want to share to point out why we don't need to overlook Jesus Christ. And I'm going to start out with an Old Testament scripture, and I'm going to ask everybody if you would go to the book of Ezekiel, and if you would go to the 34th verse, uh, 34th chapter of the book of Ezekiel. 34th chapter of Ezekiel, and we're going to read verses 1 and 2, then we're going to read verses 15 and 16. Then following the 34th chapter of the book of Ezekiel, we're going to read over in John chapter 10. We're going to read the corollary verse over in John chapter 10. Amen. Ezekiel chapter 34, starting at verses 1 and 2. And then we'll read verses 15 and 16. And after that, we will move to our Old New Testament reading in John chapter 10. And we will read verses 7 through 16. Amen. Amen. So we can stand for the reading of the word of God. Amen. 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 Ezekiel, Ezekiel. Go to Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel. If you get to Hosea, you done got too far. If you had the book of Psalms, you're not far enough. Amen. You may need to go just a little bit further. Amen. Praise God. Just to give you a few reference points. I'm not saying you don't know where it is in the Bible. If you don't know where it is, just go to the index. Amen. Ain't no harm in going to the index just as long as you get there. That's all we want to be concerned about. Amen. Amen. Ezekiel chapter 34 verses 1 and 2. And I'll read from the New King James Version. And the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God to the shepherds. Woe to the shepherds of Israel who feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? Verse 15. I will feed my flock and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. Sometimes God will take over and do it himself. Amen. I will seek what was lost and bring back what was driven away. Bind up the broken and strengthen what was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong and feed them in judgment. Amen. Let's go over to John chapter 10. Amen. John chapter 10. And we'll start at verse 7. New Testament reading, John chapter 10. And then we will start in verse 7 and read down to verse 16. John chapter 10 reads as follows. Then Jesus said to them again, Most surely, most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Now here's your blessing. Here's your blessing. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives life for the sheep. But a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not know own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd, yeah. and I know my sheep, yeah. and I am known by my own. Yeah. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, yeah. and I lay down my life for the sheep. Yeah. And other sheep, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, 
them also I must bring, uh -huh. and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Amen? Amen. And other sheep. Somebody say, I'm other sheep. I'm other sheep. Yeah, I have, which are not of the fold. Oh. Them I also I must bring, yes, and they will hear my voice, yes, and there will be one flock yes. and one shepherd. Yes, I'd like to talk to you this morning from the topic, blessed yes. to have a good shepherd. Yes, blessed yes. to have a good shepherd. Yes, you know, if I can add an addition to that, I say blessed yes. to be in the flock. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Blessed yes. to be in the flock. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. We give God the glory and the honor and the praise this morning. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. You know, when we read over there in Ezekiel 34, Ezekiel 34 points out a problem. I said, I'm going to stand here today. I'm going to do my best to do that. I'm going to stand right here. I'm going to try. Amen. Amen. You know, if my arm gets to wiggling too much, y'all just say, let go, Pastor. Let go. Amen. Praise God. Ezekiel 34 points out a problem because the shepherds, mm -hmm. both the spiritual and the secular leaders of the people of Israel, mm -hmm. were not doing their job. Mm -hmm. They were not leading the people as they should. They were not leading them in the ways of righteousness, but they were doing everything to, to benefit themselves mm -hmm. and not to raise up the people of God. Mm -hmm. And God was not happy. Uh -huh. He was not happy with the way that they were leading the people. And God eventually said that he was going to remove those shepherds, uh -huh. those leaders, uh -huh. remove them from the, remove the control that they had over the flock. Uh -huh. God said, you know what, I'm going to take care of this myself. Uh -huh. But what did God do? God, in John chapter 10, shows us what he was going to do. Because John sent one named Jesus. He sent the Messiah. He sent the Messiah to be the good shepherd over his flock. And when we read the book of John, the book of John is very evangelistic in nature. Because the book of John emphasizes the identity of Jesus as the Son of God. And not only that, but it shows us how we as believers should respond to the son of the living God. Right. How we should respond to the teachings uh -huh. of the son of the living God. Yes, when we read through the book of John, the apostle helps us to understand both the deity and the pre-existence of Jesus. Yes, All you need to do is look at John 1, uh -huh. verses 1 and 2, uh -huh. and you can see the deity of Jesus. Right. Right. Because the word says, in the beginning yeah. was the Word, yeah. and the Word was with God. Yeah. And note this, and the Word was God. Yeah. There is no ambiguity there. Say so he was in the beginning yes, with God. Yeah. And then when you look at John chapter 2 through verses 11, uh -huh. it shows us the deity and the power of Jesus uh -huh. because it highlights a number of different things. Miracles uh -huh. and signs and wonders uh -huh. that Jesus performed while he was in this world. Yes, How am I doing, Rev? I'm standing right here. I ain't moving around today. But when we look in the book, uh -huh. you look in the book and you look in John chapter 2, uh -huh. and the first thing we see is Jesus turning water into wine. Yes, Can't nobody do that but God. In John chapter 4, he heals a boy who was getting ready to die from a fever. Yes, Can't nobody do that but God. Yes, in John chapter 5, yes, he heals an invalid, yes, a man who couldn't walk that was laying by the pool of Bethesda. Uh -huh. Had been laying there 38 long years, yes, waiting for somebody to put him in the pool. Yes. But Jesus came along and said, I don't need to put you in the pool. Get up and walk. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Can't nobody do that but God. Yes. In John chapter 6, Jesus looks out over 5,000 people yeah. and said, you know what? Uh -huh. I've got five loaves of bread yeah. and two fish, yeah. and I'm going to feed these 5,000 people. Uh -huh. And just in case you think it wasn't God, uh -huh. after I finished feeding them, 
You 12 apostles. Y'all take up the fragments and eat a little bit yourself. Hallelujah. In John chapter 6, not only does he feed the 5,000, but Jesus walks on the water on the stormy sea. I don't know about you. Never heard of anybody walking on water but God. In John chapter 9, the Lord heals a man who was born blind from birth. Amen. Trust his eyes and the man is able to see. In John chapter 11, Jesus, Jesus walked to the tomb of Lazarus. A man who had been dead for four days. And then Jesus, when he got to the tomb, said, roll the stone away. And as Jesus said, Lazarus' sister said, Lord, surely he stinketh by now. But that didn't bother Jesus. All Jesus did was say, Lazarus, come forth. And the Bible lets us know that Lazarus got up from the grave, took off his grave clothes, and came walking out the tomb. Can't nobody do that but Jesus. I'm so thankful that Jesus is our shepherd. Because when we get to John chapter 10, after you look at all of the miracles that Jesus has performed, Jesus makes a declaration. He says, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door of the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And then he says, I am the true vine. See, if you're a true believer in the Lord, and you hear these seven I am statements, we can accept these statements and rejoice because not only are we saved and have a good shepherd over the flock, but we are part of the flock. And there's a blessing for the flock because in John 10, the Bible lets us know all that the shepherd is going to do. Yeah. Tells us all about the loving relationship yeah. that the shepherd has with the sheep. Yeah. I'm so thankful yeah. that when we see uh, Ezekiel chapter 34 mm -hmm. and we learn about the bad shepherds, uh -huh. that by the time we get over to the New Testament and look at John 10, yes, we can see a good shepherd. Yeah. Those bad shepherds, uh -huh. we had them even in the New Testament yes, because the Lord lets us know that he was the door. Yes, and he came through the door. He was the door of the sheep. Yes, he says, I'm the good shepherd. Uh -huh. And when we talk about the good shepherd, uh -huh. we can rejoice because those old bad shepherds, uh -huh. they want to throw the sheep out. Uh -huh. They want to take advantage of the sheep. Yes. They wanted to use the sheep to enrich themselves. Yeah. But when you got a good shepherd, yeah. when you got a good shepherd, yeah. that's somebody that you want to follow. Yeah. I'm so thankful that Jesus is yeah. the good shepherd. Yeah. When I look over here in John chapter 10 and I think about Jesus talking about the good shepherd, uh -huh. one of the several things that I see, Come on. I see the reliability of Jesus. All right. I see the blessings of Jesus. I see the sacrifice of Jesus. And I see the inclusiveness of Jesus. I really like that inclusive part. I'll get there in a minute. Hallelujah. I can't do this. I can't stand it. Oh, I'm about to hurt my back. I'm trying to just stand it. I got to walk a little bit. Y'all don't mind. Amen. When we talk about the reliability of Jesus. Yeah. He shows us what a true spiritual leader really is. Right. Because Jesus let us know that he wasn't a fly by night charlatan yeah. that was trying to do the people harm. Uh -huh. You see, we may find it puzzling, Come on now. but Jesus highlighted his reliability by stressing the work that he did to protect the flock of the sheep. Right. That's what a good shepherd does. Yeah. A good shepherd tries to protect the flock right. of the sheep. Yeah. And see, at the end of every day, the good shepherd would gather the sheep in an enclosure of rocks for the evening. And in order to protect the sheep, the, the sheep at night, uh -huh. the good shepherd didn't just bring them into the enclosure uh -huh. and get up and go home. No. 
The good shepherd would lay down in front of the opening. Come on, sir. And he would be the door that would control the traffic that was coming in or going out of the enclosure. If any, anyone wanted to do him any harm, do his sheep any harm, they had to get by the shepherd first. Yeah, right. If any of the sheep wanted to get out, they had to get by the shepherd first. Yeah. The shepherd was controlling the traffic. Yeah. And when it was time to get the sheep uh -huh. and, and, and to, to move the sheep, the shepherd would get up and walk through the opening uh -huh. toward his flock. Yes, he didn't have to climb over the wall. Come on. He didn't have to be stealthy. Uh -huh. He didn't have to try to try to find some way to get over the, 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 the wall because robbers did that type of thing. Uh -huh. The good shepherd just walked right on in the door. Come on. And we thank Jesus that he walks right on in the door because that let, lets us know he's not trying to exploit us. That lets us know he's not trying to take advantage of us. He's not a thief yes, and he is not a robber. Yes, but Jesus walked right in the door. When Jesus was talking about being the good shepherd, if we look over at Matthew 23, verse 23, he chastised the Pharisees, yes, the religious leaders of the day. Yes, sir. For neglecting to exercise mercy and justice. These religious leaders were focused on solidifying their power and, and garnering more power. But Jesus said one of the things that they needed to do is they needed to remember to show the people mercy. Yeah, yeah. I want to tell you something, saints. Come on. Jesus loves us more than you can ever know. See, his love for us is not based on any man-made rules. His love for us is not based on any status or that he's trying to get. His love for us, because he loves us, he's willing to care for all who will come to him. Somebody say all. All. Yeah, I want to get that. I want you to get that down in your spirit. Digital land, you can say all too, because the Lord loves you more than I could ever tell you. See, the Lord has blessings, multiple blessings, yes. significant blessings, yes. numerous blessings, yes. wonderful blessings. Yes. In store for all who come to him and receive him as Lord and Savior. Yes. Look at the blessings. Jesus made it clear when he was on his mission that he, his mission was not centered, that his mission was not centered on his welfare, uh -huh. but he was focused on helping the people have abundant life. Yes. Well, That's one of the blessings of Jesus, y'all. Uh -huh. John chapter 10. He came that we might have life yes. and that we might have it. What? More. That we might have it. What? More. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you want to have that abundant life, then we need to walk with Jesus. Yeah. We need to walk with him. We yeah. need to talk with him. Yeah. We, we, we need to rejoice that, that we are his own. Amen. Yeah. He is concerned about our welfare. Yeah. Right. And when we talk about that abundant life, don't go run out of here and, and run down to the Hyundai deal and, and, and pick up that palisade and say, Jesus <laughs> said, I want to have an abundant life, so surely this one is mine. For you Cadillac dealers, don't run down to the city five and say, surely this one is mine. For all of you uh, Jaguar dealers, don't go, don't go, don't go run down there and say, oh, this one is mine. No, the dealer may say, where's your money? Amen. Where's your money? See, the Lord, when it's abundant life, he's not talking about us having a big house or a big car or having a big bank account. That's man's way of thinking. And let me tell you, saints, one of the reasons that we kind of lose sight of who God is and what God does is because too many times we try to bring God down to man's level. We try to make God, we try to direct what God should be doing. We try to tell God when we ought to be blessed, how we ought to be blessed, how much blessing we ought to get. 
We need to, we try to tell God when he needs to strike down that brother or sister that stepped on our toe 25 years ago. We need to, we need to stop trying to bring God down to our level and realize that God is God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. See, our God is able to bless us not only in the physical realm, but his real interest is blessing us in the spiritual realm. Amen. God is trying to raise up a new group of people. See, when we get, when we start walking with the Lord, God wants his people to be a people who are able to discern between evil and good. God wants a people who are, are going to be obedient and not disobedient. God wants to, a people who are focused on serving, amen, serving others and not so much serving self, amen. God is looking for a people who are willing to call right, right, and wrong, wrong. Amen. God is not looking for people who walk the middle of the road and say, well, you know, every third day I go ahead and cuss just because God knows who I am. Hallelujah. God is not looking for people who say that I'm just going to go down the street and I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to get me some MD 2020 today, but tomorrow I'll be drinking apple juice. Amen. God is not looking for the people who are going to go down to the red light district, amen, to try to hang out with that prostitute, whether it be male or female, amen. God is not looking for people who are going to be out there doing whatever it is their whole their hearts desire, but God wants the people who are after his own heart. Amen. Everybody, everybody can't receive that. Everybody can't receive that because a whole lot of people are on milk and they're not on meat. Amen. They're on the milk of the word and not on the meat. And when you're on the milk of the word, your feelings get easily hurt when we start talking about the truth that is associated with the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. When we start trying to call wrong wrong and right right, people get upset. When we talk about and we bring it from the word of God. But that is the problem that God was talking about in Ezekiel 34. The leaders were letting people do whatever they wanted to do. As long as it enriched them. Amen. But if we're going to do what God wants us to do. If we want to be free from the bondages that have us all tied up and wrapped up and bound up, then we're going to have to do what God says to do. Amen. Anybody got any steak sauce in here? <laughs> Hallelujah. Or do you need some Nestle cocoa so you can pour it in your milk? Which one do you need? I don't know which one you need. Amen. <laughs> You can, you, can, you, you, you can walk with it, but here's what I encourage you to do. I encourage you to go to the word of God yourself. Don't just take my word for it. You look it up yourself. If you want to get a blessing from God, you got to be obedient to God. See, God is not selfish. God is willing to pour out all blessings and heavenly blessings and spiritual blessings in heavenly places to us. But we got to walk the walk and we got to talk the talk. Amen. We can't be faking, shaking, and baking and just trying to look like. Amen. We got to be who God says that he has called us to be. Amen. Y'all walking with me? Amen. Don't throw no stones at me. Amen. I ain't, I'm not trying to be a hireling. Amen. I'm not trying to be a hireling. When God called me into the ministry, I want to preach the unadulterated word of God. Amen. And I know that I may make people mad sometimes. Amen. But I would rather let you be right down here on this side and get and, and try and then try, try to get to heaven. But don't have what it takes to get there. Amen. Praise God. The Lord Jesus says, when you receive my blessing. Not only will I save your soul, but I'll make you free so that you can reap the spiritual blessings and the physical blessings as you go through this life. See, we got freedom, saints, because our Lord is blessing us. Those spiritual blessings and those physical blessings are equally important. We need both. Amen. We need both. 
But we got to learn to listen to Jesus' voice. I remember when I was in basic training, Air Force years ago, and we were marching down the breezeway. And we were all in formation and we were going. And one of the other one of the other training instructors, the TIs, uh -huh. he was over there and he started barking orders. Play, uh -huh. out, <laughs> lip, eight, and we just kept on marching. Uh -huh. We didn't listen to his voice, cause that wasn't the voice of our TI. Uh -huh. He was trying to make us slip up and trip up, uh -huh. trying to make us stop. Uh -huh. So our TI came up uh -huh. and his flight was marching. And he went, hey, uh -huh. oh, uh -huh. half of them stopped, half of them kept marching. Uh -huh. They were all messed up. Uh -huh. And I want to tell you something. Uh -huh. That's the way the church is. We got to learn to hear the voice of Jesus and stop listening to every other voice. When you know the voice of God, it won't matter what the devil's trying to tell you because you won't listen to the devil. He can't trip you up. He can't make you stop. He can't make you go left when the Lord said go straight. He can't discourage you when God said that you are blessed. He can't tear you down when God says you already have the victory. Why? Because you know the voice of your God. Jesus says my sheep know my voice. My sheep know my voice. We ought to be so close to God that we can get happy that the Lord calls us by name. Yes. Everybody call out your name right now. Just say your first name. Yes. Yeah, yeah, the Lord can call you by your name. Yes. Individually. Yes. Hallelujah. He can call you by your name. You know how it is, mothers? When your babies cry, you can be in a room full of other, they can be in a room full of other babies, but when your babies cry, you go, yes. wait a minute. That's mine. That's what God does. Wait a minute. That was mine right there. I know them. I want to tell you, saints, don't listen to those voices that are trying to trip you to do things contrary to the word of God. The Bible says when we know to do right and to do it not, then it is sin. Amen. It didn't say to do it and do it right and then ask for forgiveness. It said no. When you know to do right and you do it not, on, it man. is sin. Yeah, yeah. Anybody still want steak sauce or you want cocoa, some steak cocoa sauce. stuff for your meal? <laughs> Amen. Praise yeah, God. Yeah, Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. See, we we have a special relationship. So I'm in the flock. Anybody in the flock? Yeah. Anybody in the flock? Yeah. Okay. All you folks that are in the flock, uh -huh. we got a special relationship with Jesus. Yeah. The Lord said that we need to be a people who are faithful. Uh -huh. We put our hands on the gospel plow. Don't take your hands off the gospel plow. Uh -huh. Amen. Don't take your hands off the gospel plow. Don't, don't, don't look behind you. What was behind you is back there. It's still back there. Amen. Amen. But you're not walking back there anymore. Amen. You're going this way. Amen. All that stuff is in your rear view mirror. And have you ever noticed, have you ever noticed for all you drivers in here, that the, that whatever is in your rear view mirror is a smaller view than whatever's in front of you in the windshield. Hallelujah. If you're looking in the rear view mirror, you're getting something this big to look at. But if you're looking in front, boy, you can see all around you. Hallelujah. I want to see all that stuff that's in front of me. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. See, we get those, we get these, we get these blessings from the Lord. But these blessings came at a price. They came at the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. See, Jesus not only calls himself the door, but he is also the good shepherd. How did he get to be the good shepherd? Through sacrifice. We look at the sacrifices of Jesus. Jesus was willing to die to set us free. I said he was willing to die yeah. to set us free. Yeah. He sacrificed his life. Yeah. He paid the penalty for your sin and mine. Yeah. I said he paid the penalty for your sin and mine. Yeah. I said he paid the penalty for your yeah. sin and mine. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. 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 I don't know how many of y'all have ever gone to Walmart or some other store and you put your you put your card in the slot and it said decline. Yeah. <laughs> 
first, first, first thing we say, now I know that card is good card. I know I got money. I just, I, 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 I just got paid. Sometimes we're spiritually bankrupt and we don't even know it. Hallelujah. But we thank God that he's already paid the price. Amen. So whenever we go, whenever we go, and we, 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 we lay out the spiritual card. Jesus said, I got it covered. Amen. We lay, we, we lay out the check. Jesus said, don't worry, I got it covered. Amen. You ain't got to worry about this check being a thousand ball. Your spiritual check because I already done paid the price. Amen. He's given his life. And he is a sin offering. But the good news is not only is he a sin offering for the sins of the Israelites, but he is a good he is a good shepherd. He died for all men everywhere. See, our Lord is so good that he did something that a hireling would never do. And what I mean by hireling, I mean somebody that's just employed. You know how it is. You get people who work for you and some people, Ashley, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use you, you know, because you you do everything down at HEB. I think you run, I'm pretty sure as soon they're gonna have your picture up there. Welcome to my store, amen. <laughs> and, 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 and you know, you know, you got you got folks, you got folks that come to work, right? And they do just enough to get by, right? They do just enough to get by. And then you got some folks that are vested in the job, boy, and they want to do a good job. They, they, they really want to do a good job. Even on a bad day, somehow they're able to smile. Now, they might go to the bathroom and scream after they smile a little while, but they're able to smile. Well, I'm going to tell you what. That first person, that first person is the person that we want to work with. That second person, you know, that first, that second person, no, no, the first person is the one that just does enough. That second person is the one that's vested. That's the one we want to work with. Yeah. See, they're not a hire. They're not just a hire. They're not just ones that when things are good, everything is good. But when things are bad, they're ready to take off their apron. They're ready to take off their shirt, throw it down, and just walk out the door. Jesus was not a hire. I know he wasn't a hire because the Lord went to that cross. And on that cross at Calvary, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I know he wasn't a hireling because when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, the Bible says that he was sweating and agonizing over what he had to go through, that his sweat became like drops of blood. I know that he wasn't a hireling because even though he could have called down 12 legions of angels to deliver him from what he had to go through, Jesus said, I'm going to go to the cross and complete the mission because I love you, yeah. and you, yeah. and you, yeah. and you, yeah. and you, yeah. all of you, yeah. everybody, and yeah. you. Yeah. Amen. 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 He was not a hireling. Yeah. But Jesus understood the big picture. Mm -hmm. See, this is why we can't bring God down to our level. We don't understand the big picture. Yeah. Right. Jesus said that I have sheep. Mm -hmm. You look at verse 16 of Matthew chapter 10, of John chapter 10. If you look at verse 16, you see Jesus said, I have sheep that are not of this fold. Yeah. See, our Lord Jesus died mm -hmm. for the Jews and the Gentiles okay. alike. Yeah. Yeah. And for all of you people who were not born in Israel to a Jewish family, you're all Gentiles. Yeah. We are all Gentiles. The Lord said, I have sheep that are not of this fold. See, I, this is what I'm thankful about, that Jesus' salvation was inclusive. It is inclusive. He is inclusive. The salvation that he provides, Jesus is building one flock under one shepherd. See, that's, that's, that's one flock under one shepherd. That's one of those shouting moments because you say, he didn't just come for the Jews, but he came for me. Oh, let me tell you something. Not only did he just come for you, but he came for your babies. He came for your grandbabies. He came for your great, 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 great grandbabies. He came for all of those. The Lord, while he was suspended between heaven and earth, was thinking about you. He was calling your name. He was seeing you in his mind. Mary and John and and the other disciples may have been around the cross, but Jesus not only saw them, but he saw 
me and he saw you. When the blood was streaming down his face, he saw me and he saw you. When he looked at the blood streaming from his hands, he was thinking about me and he was thinking about you. When he was trying to breathe on that cross and suffocating in the fluid of his own lungs, and when he was pulling up, he said, I'm pulling up because I'm thinking about all that I am going to save. When he took that last breath, he yes. said, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. He was thinking about you, and he was thinking about me. His, his, his work was inclusive. His, his salvation is inclusive. And not only does it cover you, but it covers all your sins. Oh, my God. It covers all the stuff that we have done from yesterday, today, and even into tomorrow. Amen. But that's not a license to go out and act crazy. Amen. That's not a license to go out and act crazy. We might, we might mess up sometimes, but our, our goal is to walk in righteousness. Amen. Because we are, we are a transformed people. We're no longer conforming to the ways of the world. Amen. Amen. We follow a good shepherd. Yeah. And he wants us to be uh, examples of Christ. He wants us to be the light of the hill. He wants us to be the salt of the earth. Yeah. Jesus gave up his life so that we all could live. Yeah. He died on a cross yeah. 2,000 years ago. But no matter how long ago it was that he died, Jesus is still the door. Yes. He's still the good shepherd. Yes. Everybody who would come to him can uh, boldly proclaim John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, whosoever, whosoever shall believe on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We know that we have everlasting life because when Jesus went to the grave, the devil thought he had it. Hallelujah. There was a party going on. This is John Pope's words. You won't find this in the Bible. There was a party going on down in hell. We got it. 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 And the old devil was talking to the grave. And when he was in the grave, the grave said, don't worry, devil. I got him. I got him. I got him. Got him on the first day. And on the second day, he he said, devil, you the grave, you still got. Don't wear it, devil. I got it. I got it. I got it. And then something happened on the third day. Hallelujah. Early on a Sunday morning. And there was a rumbling and there was a shaking and there was an earthquake. And the devil got a little nervous and, and the earthquake and the earthquake kept rumbling and shaking and the devil picked up the phone and called up to the grave and said, Grave, what's going on? What's going on? And the grave couldn't do it, but he got away. He got away. He got away. But I want to tell somebody that Jesus got up on the third day. He got up with all power in his hands. And he is alive. He is alive. And the power he lives, we stand on the end of him. Thank you, Lord, for being a good shepherd.
that you made. You made it, you made it, you made it, you made it. You made it. Washed in the blue. And because you followed the good shepherd. And because you were part of the flock, you made it in. We praise God as we look forward to the day when we will be able to see the Lord Jesus face to face. We can praise God that we're blessed and have a good day. Our God is a good God and He is worthy of the human praise. Father God, we just come down in the name of your son Jesus and we want to thank you for being the good shepherd, Jesus. We want to thank you for just blessing us. We want to thank you that you are not like the hireling that would abandon us in the good times or the bad times. You are always there. If we just hold on to your unchanging hand, God, we will be able to realize the blessings of the Lord. Father God, my prayer is that you would bless each and every person under the sound of my voice. Lord, whatever struggles, whatever trials, whatever tribulations that they may be going through, Lord God, I pray that you would help us all to continue to look to you. Father God, Father God because you make it all work out. Heavenly Father, as we go through this coming week, we pray that you would bless this upcoming banquet, dear Heavenly Father, on Thursday night. Lord God, that it will be a time where we lift up the name of Jesus and glorify and magnify your holy name. Now, Lord, we pray that the grace of Jesus, the love of God, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit would rest, rule, and abide with us all, now and forevermore. And all God's children join us together, saying, Amen. Oh, how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. I want to tell you, my brothers and my sisters, we thank God for the Holy Spirit being here with us on today. Our God truly, truly was blessing us. So, what do we do? As people of God, we have to always make sure that we want to be obedient to the Lord. We want to always walk in faith, just trusting that whatever God says, God will do. God can bring healing to our lives. God can bring deliverance to our lives. If we will walk with him, he definitely will walk with us. My brothers and my sisters, we thank you for joining us today. And we pray that as you come and if you're here in San Angelo, that you would drop by 721 West 19th Street and you will worship with us at either our Wednesday night Bible study at 6.15 p.m., our Sunday morning Sunday school at 9 a.m., or the worship hour at 10 a.m. We would love to have the opportunity to love on you. Our prayer is that God will bless you. That God will keep you. Have a very blessed day.